<laughs> How have you been though? I feel like it's been forever. Um, I've been good. I've been good. Um, like just running around with my head ragged, but I mean, yeah, enjoying, enjoying life. And my yes. son actually, we're going um June fourteenth to Disney because he's a gamer and his school won the grand national championship and they're going to compete over overwatch. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. So I got him t-shirts. I'm going to be selling his t-shirts at the game for all the kids to inspire the kids. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, that's huge. Goes, you goes, have to tell me like literally everything and like when to watch. Cause my son is the same. My son yeah. is a gamer and he's like, oh he'd God, be like, yeah. so, so Ludlow has a, has a, as a gaming team and you have to have the grades to play. I have yeah. to look into this. Absolutely. I have to look into this. That's, oh, and you can, can get college scholarships. What? Yes. People, did it, everyone know about this? And I didn't? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I do. Is, yeah, the crazy thing. And this is my sister. Hello. Yeah, this is Paula. I met, so the interesting thing, I met Paula by Jesus. Literally. Um, literally. <laughs> so the chair I have downstairs, her husband put it out in front of their house. I got lost on the way to taking Sydney to school. How did I get lost? I have no idea. I did. Oh, you told me the story. Yep. And I picked up the chair and, and yeah, like, okay, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't just be it happen. So true. And I feel like it's it was weird like that. And then she started talking to my husband Chris, and they just had a nice little chat. And I was indoors and I kind of like saw them outside. I'm like, oh, what are they doing? Okay, you know. And then I left it mm -hmm. at that. And then Julie, I feel like you reached out to us just remembering like what Chris might have told you about yeah. in a Fairfield Minute or one our business, you know. Um and it just kind of snowballed from there. We met at a coffee shop okay. and we just yes. talked for yeah, ever. We just talked for 30 minutes and it was like two <laughs> hours and some change later. Literally, like it just kept going. No, because this is why, because she told me her story and guess what they watch? The Chosen. And oh. The Chosen changed their life. Big fans. Yeah, yes. so am I. Right? I watch every episode. I'm, I'm the round tables. <laughs> It's so moving and it is yeah. so powerful to have yeah. all, these, all these stories that you've kind of heard, you know, you heard of, you, you, you know, read the, you know, stories in the Bible or whatever, but yeah. like, or you heard, you know, your, your pastor or your reverend or whatever. Right. Like, you brought it together. But you don't stop you and really think about who they were as people, people, you know, and what their lives were like. And so when you see that and see, their experiences come to life it almost it just puts you like in their place right yeah. and it was just Maybe. it's just been yeah. an amazing yeah. journey yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely so, <laughs> so there it goes so then they told me a story they were like well you'll never believe this and i remember her husband saying well money was just dropping out of the air i said i exactly knows how that happened because yes. it happened to her it happened to me I don't know if it ever happened to you. We're, we're like, we were like in a, in a place where like, you know, you know yeah. like, God, how are we going to get out of this? You know, and yeah. things just start happening. And Chris always uses that, in that, that story. Like you never, like God doesn't give you what you ask for. You know, it's not like I need money. Give me money. He gives yeah. you, you know, I want the cake. Like right. he gets you the bread, the flour, the sugar, the da, 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 you know, and right. you have to put in the work too. But it was just like, when you just kind of, we just left, we just left it up to him, you know, right. and everything just started coming and yeah. we were being so blessed in like these very odd, but amazing ways. Right. And, um, yeah. So we just got into talking about all of this, all of our experiences, and we were certainly touched by everything that Julie is doing. And of, of course, like by extension, all of you like are doing to help the kids in Bridgeport. And it just, mm -hmm boggled my mind how like the amount of commitment the amount of effort that you're putting into all of this um that is remarkable it's just so special you don't you know you don't really see all that work that goes behind the scenes like a lot you know sometimes you're just buying tickets to go to an event and know how nice it was how fun it was but like all that work and all that like dedication to to make it happen Right. I was blown away by um, everything you were telling me about who's going to be present. You know, the, the just the amount of love and I mean, you pulled some crazy string. Like it's just crazy. Yeah, like yeah. how how much you've done. So yeah. So like multicultural magnet like saved my life, saved my sister's life, saved this little one's life, and we 
me and him at least, I don't not too much hurt. We tortured those teachers. <laughs> in, in, 19, in the 1990s and then 2000s, like we tortured them. When I tell you torture, both of us we were are, known as, are known as the cheer throwers. <laughs> so we oh, both threw cheers yeah. at teachers that we absolutely love to this day. Yeah. The teacher he threw a chair at, Literally, she's gonna walk him down the aisle. That's his mother. <laughs> like she gave birth to him, but Miss Villanova is gonna walk him down the aisle. Miss <laughs> Conroy, I threw a cheer at her when she was pregnant. I'm a labor and delivery nurse now. Oh my god! Right, and I was the I was the the main speaker <laughs> <laughs> at her retirement because I needed to explain what this woman Maria Santos Conroy did for me. Ironically, my mother died when I was six. God knew I needed Maria Santos back in my life. My mother's name was Maria Santos. That's what God yes. does. And so I, he, God knew I wouldn't like literally accept anyone. But when I found out her name was Maria Santos, and that's my mother's name, like, holy moly. And she's Portuguese. My family's Cape Verdean. Yeah. So who could relate better to me than Maria Santos, who's Portuguese? You wow. know, but Maria that's Santos. Amazing. So yeah, so like he, Miss Villanova. <laughs> Why? Miss <laughs> Villanova was a troubled child right <laughs> and so Ms. Villanova loved him to no end and still loves him like yeah she saw his son the other day and almost lost her mind oh my god um, and was like look at my baby he looks just like my baby <laughs> I love it but isn't that so cool how you can have I had very similar relationships with my teachers and it bums me out when like people don't have this kind of relationship yeah they yeah. become like family. And even when I go back home to visit, you know, it's like one of the things mm -hmm. that we would always look forward to. It's like, let's go to school and see let's, our teachers again. Yeah. I mean, like that was like our thing to do. Yeah, and a lot of them at this point, that's what we do. <laughs> is that what it's like? Yeah, it feels like a very good community. Yeah. yeah. People at my job say, you have so much energy. I said, you don't know the energy that multicultural holds. So I brought my director there to yeah. do a career fair. She was like, are all of you guys like this? I said, all of us are like this. So you know, what the, makes what makes multicultural like this? Like, what was your experience? Like, what do you think, like, elevates that experience yeah. so much so, for you? I mean, the first the first thing we learned is different is dynamite. That is what that, that is. It's written on the, the rotunda. Mm -hmm. Different is dynamite. We're a school of immigrants. We're yeah. a school of either we're immigrants or our parents were immigrants. We're a school right. where we did not speak English. Most of us, our first language. And if we did speak English, then because we were born here, we were learning Spanish and Portuguese. Mm -hmm. I say Spanish and because you pick either Portuguese or Spanish to learn. But by the time you get through it, you're speaking Spanish and Portuguese and a little bit of French and a little bit of Shay Shay with Chinese and Nihama and all the other stuff that they incorporate with every month right. with different cultures. That's so incredible. when I tell people, when I tell people, you know, I say, I go in the room, I see my patient. I said, mi nombre es Julia Santos, yo hablo español. They're like, wait, are you Dominican? No. El no. Pueblo Portuguese, you know, me Julia. You know, and they're like, wait, are you Portuguese? No. You know, <laughs> parlez-vous un peu de français? Como allez-vous uh, au and they're like, wait, wait, you speak French? And I'm like, and I speak our dialect of Creole. Like, yeah. but they incorporate that in the school. So right. you learn about different people's culture and you respect different people's culture and background. And everybody that comes out of it literally can speak at least one other language, if not more. That's beautiful. Like really not many schools can say that at all. Like, or, you know, you have like, you learn Spanish and, or like, you know, you may, may I don't know. Like, I feel like this is, this is so much yeah. importance on, Obviously, culture, arts, you know, it seems to have a really nice foundation in that sense. Yeah, we, we actually, during COVID, we had a virtual 1992 reunion because the class of 1992 is the best yeah. class. Um, but no, no. <laughs> but no. We, 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 30 years later, we still come together like we never left each other. Love it. Um, and ironically, the main topic was we were a school of broken children that went through physical, mental, sexual abuse, or all three. Yeah, but these teachers knew some, but they didn't know all. But it didn't matter. They still took the time to love us and take care of us. I stayed after school with the teachers like crazy. A lot of us did. Yeah, you know. And then they took us for pizza and ice cream. They were our mothers. Yeah, you know, Miss Rua, Miss Conroy, Miss yeah. Lot, Miss Sir, um, Miss Miss Odette uh, Rogers Van Marder. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to this day, I, I was just at Miss Van Marder's house the other day. 
you know, playing awesome. with her chickens and I brought my nephew with me. There's so many of them. You know, we could name them all forever, right? It's like the yeah. whole, whole list. But let's go, let's start at kindergarten. I'm like, yeah. 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 this is H. This is Malene. Like I'm literally yeah. going through the years. But the crazy thing is, is that we even the teachers are coming back for this game. They're the cheerleaders. Yeah, that's you know, crazy. Former, when I read former, that, I was like, this is incredible. Former this cheerleaders are coming back to cheer. Former basketball players are coming back to play basketball. That's you know, it's it's not just the students, it's the teachers too. There's teachers that can't go. One yeah. teacher, Miss Lynn, donated a hundred dollars. She's retired. Like, um, you know, and then best the, art teacher ever. Best <laughs> art teacher ever. <laughs> that was my thing. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> he has an art teacher he loves too, but Miss Lynn was amazing. <laughs> you know, she, 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 she taught me ni hao ma. Like she taught yeah. me those things that I wouldn't have learned otherwise unless I was watching a cartoon, the new cartoons that they have out that teaches that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I love so that. Like, I love that. Yeah. And then and then one quarter is actually going to be teachers that are there now and they all suck and they don't want to play, but they're going to play. You know, <laughs> one quarter are parents and it's a soccer school. So parents are like, I don't play basketball. So we have two parents, but that's OK. We're bringing we're bringing a Cavertian group of soccer players there that day to do a little soccer activity with the kids. Oh my gosh. One, so let's yeah. talk about this event. OK, so the event we're talking about is actually going to be held this Saturday, June yes. 10th. Two yes. to four. Two to four. Um, and so do you have that? Like, how is the event going to kind of flow? You're mentioning like a lot of different, yeah. like the soccer things. Is that kind of like a, a halftime type of thing or like a little oh, yeah. clinic so, happening beforehand? What yeah, What is so the like, day like that day? So the day, so the day's technically the game starts at two. Yeah. Um, doors open at one o'clock. When the doors open, we have a, a, a young woman um, from Trinidad that's going to be greeting people and singing with her band as people walk in, because we're going to celebrate international, because it's multicultural magnet, international cultures. Um, when people walk in, they if they haven't bought tickets yet, which tickets may sell out, we don't know. Um, we're going to release some more tickets at the door. We're trying to hold them out for the kids so they can get their tickets first. Yes. Um, so they're going to be greeted by that. We have vendors, um, a woman by the name of Mimi, who is in Bridgeport, who helps vendors that are in Bridgeport Wow. to promote their business. So she has six right now that are confirmed, but more are coming. We also have international food. We have a, a woman who makes Colombian food um, that was at the basketball thing with News 12 with us today. And she's going to be bringing nice. her food. We have people from Guatemala. We have people from Mexico. We have Cape Verdean food. We have um, Brazilian, a restaurant that may or may not come. We'll see. Um, I know. Oh. Um, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Um, so, so some of the companies are like, oh, we really don't need to do this. I said, well, your place is empty. We could help you. And they're like, oh yes. Um, so, you know, we have that. We have, um, a, a Cape Verdean guy who is actually, um, a firefighter mm -hmm. who is like the hot, the head of the firebirds that has his own, I uh, can't wait for this barbecue, <laughs> chicken ribs and everything. He's bringing his truck. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tisha Hudson, Tisha Hudson, who has edible couture in Stratford, the best cupcakes you ever had in your life or cake cups. She's bringing her truck. We have a Brazilian spot, not too far on Brooklyn, on Brooklyn called Grazy's Foods. They're bringing their truck with ACI. Um, yeah. I think I pronounced that right. <laughs> um, um, like that, per, the acai, the acai, acai, yeah. they're, oh. They're acai. Oh my God. They're amazing. Um, we have people who um, frequent 19th hole. 19th hole is like cheers yeah. back in the day. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The, like the whole bar is coming. Yeah, um, that's incredible. You know, so we have different vendors, different things. We have people talk to people about insurance. Um, I'll be honest, I'm tired of seeing GoFundies. Listen, uh, it's, important, it's important to do, you can afford it. You actually can afford insurance. You really can. So we're having several people, alumni that sell insurance. Prime America, that's going to come. That's going to, you know, have a table for that as well. Um, we have people who are just coming off the ground and just trying new things in life and want to be, want to do big things in life with their companies that are, they're going to have their company's food, of course, brings everyone, but also vendors of, of um, jewelry and Brazilian perfume, and they can't come, but they gave me their cards. And absolutely the, the stores that are up and down Madison Avenue. I um, love this. Yeah. So then it's you come a in, community, like this is huge. This yeah, is, but that, you know, that's multicultural. I call it multicultural magnet, right? The multicultural, yeah. nobody, no multicultural magnet magic. 
people yeah. don't, you know, don't understand it till they see it for themselves. So during the game, again, it's going to be one quarter of each. The last quarter is going to be like an all-star. The Wizards game, Harlem Wizards game is not like what people think it is. It is a party within a basketball game. They have people up and dancing. I have this gentleman called Shimmy Shimmy. Yeah. His name is not Shimmy Shimmy. He's a 60 year old <laughs> retired, retired Indian gentleman who literally shimmies the whole time he's at Edge Fitness. And I go to Edge Fitness in Fairfield. They're coming. Yeah. As oh, well. yeah, like they're going to have, yeah, they're going to have a table to kind of get people into working out and things like that and get them yeah. signed up for a membership. Um, hopefully they'll give us some nice discounts. Yeah. Um, so Shimmy's going to come and you've never seen anyone dance like Shimmy. He's going to be one of our entertainments. Oh um, singing the Black National Anthem. Dun, da, da, da. Her, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's a really good, but a really good friend. Really good that lived together. across the street from us on Poplar Street in Bridgeport, Tiffany Spinks, known as Phoenix Fire, who yeah. is a Grammy nominated artist. Amazing. And she might sing a little bit of her new single. That'd be so um, great. Oh, I hope she yeah. does. Yeah. Oh my God. Wait till you see this. And then at halftime, we have uh, Bridgeport's own battle rapper, City Towers, C I T Y Y Towers who literally travels the United States and hosts shows and he's amazing and he'll be blessing us at halftime and we'll be partying through the whole thing. I mean, does everyone realize like the talent and the, like- I have no idea, for 10 to $15, that's it. This is it's, it's, huge. I mean, it's a no brainer. Yeah, it's literally yeah. a no brainer. And I tell people all the time, like for instance, my son, he's a gamer. He's, we're yeah. going in a couple of weeks. Yeah. you know, to go and we're selling his t-shirts and he's going to talk to the students about gaming yeah. and how it's competing on a, on a, on a, a national level, which is going to be his first time doing it, but how kids can get scholarships and how kids can make more money than doctors, lawyers, and nurses combined being a gamer with sponsorship yes. and travel the world. Mm -hmm. um, so his team is coming to watch the game, but they're also, I'm going to be there. We're going to sell my son's t-shirts for people to support him. We'll have the link um available yeah. for people so they can watch him live and he's from bridgeport goes to school in fairfield but he's from bridgeport that's incredible congratulations yeah. on all of this seriously this is amazing amazing and Thank some you. of the players that you have actually coming back right who yeah, are yeah. some so, people that are I, actually playing because I mean, like it's great that we have the wizards too but yeah, like yeah yeah who's on so, this so i'm playing I, yeah we can. i'm playing my nephew's playing he played as well um we actually have so the players that we have is um alicia carpenter um who played in 1992 with me daryl yeah. woods who played for uconn played football for uconn as well uh terrence nesmith um renee leach who is um her son played international basketball mm -hmm. um and she also played on our team uh, my brother who's downstairs he played basketball um, he is actually into real estate and buying buildings and doing that type of thing on top of working for, um, uh, sorry, working, working for all of these. Um, we have um, our, our friend, Jerson Chiloisa, that grew up on Poplar Street with us, but also played basketball for Central, who also does real estate and, and anything. Our mm -hmm. former teacher, Ms. Diaz, um, that was a teacher at uh, Ludlow, um, who also Diaz Kohler, who played basketball as well when she was younger, softball, but she played on our team. We have a, a producer that graduated from our school, Carl, uh, Justin and John, who are real estate people. One of them is actually an impersonator for Tupac and travels to Vegas. Um, exactly, yeah. Well, we you're Mr. gonna mess people up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have, I know, we have Mr. Cluet, who was our incredible Portuguese teacher, but can play a guitar like no one's business. Oh, and you know and taught us a lot of portuguese songs do you remember the songs oh, he taught? No. like i remember the songs you guys used to sing I him for reading. yeah so we have you know them on top of the teachers that are there now on top of the cheerleaders that are coming back because we have even the old school cheerleaders that are coming back that do incredible things one is mona lisa the pino who actually works in a diamond district and yeah. she's done, she just came back from doing the diamond show in vegas um, and a slew of other people are alumni. There's alumni that donated a, a great amount of money. We're actually, it's the Alumni Association that's bringing them. Liani Arroyo, which is one of the top people in the health department in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, we have brain surgeons. Dorothy, what's Dorothy's last name? Dorothy something or other. I can't remember how to so bad. Um, 
We have, you know, <laughs> you know, a couple of people that can't come because they're involved in esports. Alex Rodriguez, who's a lawyer in Florida. Yeah. Um, but we have people who are doing such big things that came out of Bridgeport yeah. for all minorities. And so it's important for us to let the public know, let the, the kids yes. know, multicultural know that despite where you start from, it's where you end that's important. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. matter actually starting from multicultural or starting from Bridgeport is the best thing in life for you because when you come from a broken environment and you've been broken and broken, like I can, I can break this. And when yeah. I put it back together, it's stronger than it's ever been before. Oh, yes. So people who look at me and say, you're broken, how could you be a leader? You're broken, how could you do this? Because I've heard it. That's and I always say, do you know God picks the most broken people to lead? Yep. You know, it's the broken people that lead the best. And I can name them, Oprah Winfrey, Maya Angelou, Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene. Like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. of course I'm broken. And thank God I am, because that's why I have the endurance to do what I do. Because without that, I couldn't get through most of the things in life that mm -hmm. I get through. The lesson I hadn't been through. Absolutely. Yeah. You, ha you have to stumble. You have to fall. Like whether it's, you know, environment or just plain old mistakes. Like even my husband, Chris, always says like, there's no such thing as mistakes. There's just lessons. You know what yes, I mean? Exactly. There, there's always a solution to things, but it's, it's your attitude, right? It's how you approach these things that really makes the difference and kind of like dictates like how how things are going to go and they're not right. going to be a perfect straight line you know no nobody's life is a is perfect and it's never and always greener somewhere else and hmm? your husband was born and raised in bridgeport correct he was born in bridgeport yes his yeah. family so his dad was was Not in the army. village he was in the army so there was when he was young a little section of fairfield that had um was allotted to military housing so that's when they moved to Fairfield. But yeah, otherwise my husband's family's from Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So he knows, he knows. He does, <laughs> he definitely does. It, it, it's so true. Like he, he always talks about, you know, the, I mean, talk about multicultural, you know, I mean, the, the fact that it was never like all white families and on his street, like right. he was surrounded by literally the gamut, you know? The United Nation. Yes, <laughs> it was the gamut and- yeah. um, but yeah, I just think it's wonderful that you guys have such a beautiful community, not just like in your community, but like the fact that it started with school, that's yeah. with those teachers, those great role models, and that yeah. it, it's obviously carried through, you know, we all kind of do our own thing and, you know, you don't see each other for a bit, but like you said, when you come back together, it's so powerful mm -hmm. it is. and so obviously so magical, you know, yeah, that, is. that this is going on. There's a lot of spirit behind it. You can feel it. Like yeah. Yeah. That was one thing I kept telling Chris after you and, you know, we had met and chatted. It's like, we we're just like, it's like palpable yeah, how yeah. much love there is for these yeah. things, you know, these mm -hmm. uh, callings or these like endeavors that you, that you take Absolutely. part in. Or yeah. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It's wonderful. You know, and, and I tell people all the time, like my kids, unfortunately, didn't get into multicultural magnet. But that doesn't stop me from, because I look at those kids and I remember me and I am them. Yeah. There were people that took the time, you know, whether it be a Melissa Cracky's mother, which was the head of the PTA, mm -hmm. doing everything she did to make sure we had activities and did things at the school. Like it literally was those people that literally raised us and everybody did their little part to give us that foundation that we need to yeah. go above and beyond. Yeah. Yes, I'm a nurse by trade, but I do a lot of different things. Yes. You know, and Obviously. no one can tell me I can't. They tell me I can't. How are you going to do that? I, and I tell them, watch me. Yeah. Easy. I'm from Bridgeport. I can do it. <laughs> I'm Cape Verdean. I can do whatever. Like, you can't tell me I can't do it. When you tell me I can't do it, guess what? Makes me want to do it even more just to prove you wrong. I know. Um, this but, is yeah, wonderful. So, yeah, and so the kids, going. the kids must be ecstatic about everything that's happening. And like, yeah, the fun. it must be like make them feel so special too. Oh yeah. And that's, so what we did too is the Harlem wizard had a four week program yeah. that they did on health, fitness, mind, body, and so-called wisdom. So the first week they were there, it was a zoom meeting with them. The second week, someone came in person. Third week, it was another zoom. And then last Friday they had a graduation yeah. where the whole school took part in a uh, basically a workout with the basketball and winning prizes and different things like that. On top of that, we went, we went around to four other schools. 
We went to uh, John Winthrop and surprised the schools there. We went to Discovery School. We went to Dunbar. We went to Higher Horizons, and then we ended at Multicultural. So, so the goal is that every school will take this on and bring it to life, whichever way they have to. I cannot do it. Oh, of <laughs> but course not. Yeah, kind of passing on the baton. Yes. Because I'm really tired of them saying they don't have money for the schools in Bridgeport. Yes. I baked pies. I made truffles. I ran 5Ks. I'm done. Yeah. You know, I, I was fun, but the Harlem Wizards could make in one game twenty to $30,000 for the school. This will make it so that they can have a playground. Now the city of Bridgeport is giving them a playground, but mm -hmm. they'll have a soccer or basketball field because of this. Yeah. They'll actually and those have things are important. Like we don't really talk, you know. I remember my sister worked in the in the Bridgeport School District for a long time, and she still is. She's just actually moved to a different school, um, but still, it's it's the amount of um, the amount that the teachers have to give in certain communities, and and we definitely noticed it in Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. The amount that comes out of pocket right. just to make sure that the students have, have the basic need. like yep, basic yeah. needs in the classroom, you know. It's just, it, it, it's right in front of us. And mm -hmm. there is so much that we can do to help and assist. And even if it's like, it's, it sounds like, what is the basketball game going to do? And it's like, uh, awareness, fundraising, people, there's obviously love behind this community. People are going to stand up and join you in it. Um, mm -hmm. And this, it makes it so exciting. Like what yeah. you're doing is so special. Um, and I think of my sister every time, like, you know, she would talk about, you know, how she would get frustrated because it's like, there's only so much I can do and I'm trying my best here and doing that, you know? So to see this almost like, you know, all, th this Bridgeport community kind of coming together, together, coming back together from everywhere that they've gone. Yeah. Not just to the Bridgeport <laughs> like, community, but this yeah, obviously literally, this literally we, have from, magnet. we have people coming from Maryland. We've got people coming from Washington, from Florida, from Massachusetts. Um, one of the girls, Cindy Farah, um, who's Cindy Nagy now, but she's a nurse practitioner in Maryland. She's bringing, she's coming and she's bringing her five kids and she's going to do a Zumba with the kids prior to the game. That's, That's awesome. what she does for her kids at their school. But yeah. she was never allowed to be a cheerleader because her Portuguese parents were very strict. Yeah. So she's actually going to be an honorary cheerleader. To oh, make that's awesome. Yeah. So she's going to be doing the Zumba, you know, and, and doing that. But she's also bringing five kids with her on top of it um, because she wants them to understand what the MCM magic is because they don't even understand it. Yeah. Um, even like with the, with the fundraiser, um, we're going to be working with a company called Kits for Kids. My oh. daughter used it at Mill Hill. They literally pack up a box with pen, pencils, crayons, markers for $20. All the supplies a kid would need. So for the kids at multicultural that can't, their parents can't afford that. Yeah. You know, that's too much for them. This will help reimburse that money. I'm also using this company for something that we do is called um, even small hands can make a difference. My son did it at his school and we just tagged the name yeah. where we're using this company at the fundraiser. We're going to be doing raffles to raise money for that, to send book bags, hygienic products and help pay for lunch for a kid all for $25 for each kid. So we're going to be doing these raffles to raffle money for that and bringing barrels, a barrel to represent the barrel that we're going to be shipping down there. My nephew that's not here is going to Cape Verde Island with my son, and they're going to physically pass these book bags, hygienic products, and pay for their lunch, $5 a year. That's it for the year. The kids in Cape Verde. Kids yeah. in Cape Verde on top of that. So it's not just going to help kids here. We're going to do something to help kids over there as well. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, and that and the, the company is amazing. All I have to do is give them my order. They'll ship the bags already packed, book bags ready to go, hygienic products ready to go, and a little kit, and that's it. They're incredible. an incredible organization. I think they're out of Ohio, um, but they didn't hesitate to say, absolutely, we'll help you. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So kids don't, even, don't have to like stress about those little details. They can literally focus on what they want to learn. and Exactly. Mm -hmm you know, the important stuff at school. Absolutely. And even this company is for like, it, it's, it's inexpensive for local kids, right? So it's not something that's just for international, like parents don't have to stress about getting it. They can just order it online. The teachers input what they want. They order it online. It's 15 or $20 and that's it. It's a book bag or it's just a box with everything they need because they'll have their own book bags. Yeah. Um, it's like a no brainer and it's Crayola products on top of it. 
Yeah. So it's all available. We, you know, it's just something that had to be researched and found, but they're all out there. Um, so it's so great. what um, if so, if people are very, you know, interested in this event and in all the like, you know, fundraising efforts that you're doing, but they can't attend. What yeah. is the best way for them to donate one? Yeah, word yeah. yeah, I actually have a link and I can share it with you. Yeah, we'll uh, put it in the comments. It's, yeah, no it's a link. It's the alumni link because we're trying to beat the students. <laughs> we're trying to beat the students. <laughs> the students are raising money too individually. Oh, great. Right now, yeah, so the second grade class is beating us. <laughs> and so today they're actually having an activity at the school called Fun Day, and I'm going to go beat them all up so they can get more money and beat us because this is so unfair. Like we're alumni, like we're adults. We should be making more money than you guys. But no, this second grade class wants their free pizza That's party incredible. that was promised to them. And their teacher wants a free massage that was <laughs> promised to them as well. And I'm like, it's absolutely so not. No, because no, I have to pay for it. And I'm a nurse and I don't travel and I don't make what I should be making right now. Absolutely not. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's wonderful to like see the competition within the school itself, yeah. but it's, it's wonderful. Like the teachers were like, eh, and then you said, oh, free massage. You're like, go get money to the kids. And I'm like, oh, now go get money, get a free massage. I see and you know, and the masseuse that's going to do it um, is uh, Miss Iris who does home massages. Oh, lovely. From Bridgeport as well. So she's going to be there at the, she should be there if she doesn't have any clients. She told me she was going to be there. Oh, so be she great. should be there. That'd so, be you know, the person will get their little free 15 minute massage yeah. or whatever and, you know, and so on and so forth, but she could publicize her business as well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I will, I will definitely share that link with you. Thank um, you. I do not want them to win. I am such a poor <laughs> loser. So <laughs> loser. Uh, we'll spread like, the like, word. I'll see you Absolutely. Absolutely. Because <laughs> we're poor. Cool. We just got money after that one. <laughs> we're doing something wrong here. Um, wow. But a, a lot of alumni have actually donated straight to the school as right. opposed to straight to, yeah. So people could donate through the Harlem Wizards or they can make a check out to Multicultural Magnet School. They can drop it off with them. They can get in contact with me. I will pick it up and I'll be more than happy to bring it um, whichever way is works better for them, but I can definitely provide you with the link. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Oh and, then, and then at the end of the month, yeah. um, a, a very famous basketball player in the nineties named Nadine Duman, who is a Gatorade uh, player, mm -hmm. uh, number one in the nation, uh, won a gold, a silver medal in the Olymp junior Olympics, played overseas um, and helped their teams go into like Final Four and Sweet 16, came back and played a little time, I think, with the girl, the Knicks, but went with the Monarchs, if I'm not mistaken, um, in the WNBA and is now the assistant coach, I mean, excuse me, the head coach of Virginia State University, but was assistant coach under Rutgers and head coach of Grambling and, and had a fantastic traveling basketball camp that dissipated, but she is coming to Bridgeport on June 29th. June 30th and July 4th and doing a free camp for a hundred students at Central High School. A free camp. A free camp. Free. F-R-E-E. -E. She was an immigrant here from Haiti. Her mother raised her, her and her two sisters, three on the east side of Bridgeport. She went to Reed School, went to Central Magnet. She at that, she was a good student, wasn't the best student. Went to every single, and the thing I'll never forget about Nadine, went to every single practice, was the first one there, the last one to leave, did not do well in her SATs, missed one practice for SAT prep to get the SAT she needed to go to school. She yeah. broke records, 2,300 points in her career, Gosh. broke all three point records, would score 40 to 50 points a game. Mm -hmm. There were teams that would have 53 points and she would have 60 on her own, yeah. um, is doing a free camp for a hundred students in Bridgeport. They have to be a Bridgeport resident. People can volunteer though. So if you're a teenager and you wanna be mentored by Nadine, come and volunteer. Um, so we're taking high schoolers as volunteers. Um, we have a bunch of Bridgeport students that have already said they're gonna do it. It's for um, grades fifth to grades ninth. We have a company um, called, um, hold on one minute, that is, is, is actually help sponsoring one of our sponsors. Mm -hmm. W.C. McBride Electronics and Contractors that are located at 1027 Fairfield Avenue. They're actually getting all these kids the t-shirts. We oh, need basketballs. So I, yeah. 
or, or jerseys, yeah. one or the other, right? Yeah. Um, we need a hundred basketballs for each of these kids. We need whistles for people who are volunteering. Yeah. I, I said, the volunteers don't need t-shirts. We're fine. We can wear white t-shirts and yeah. just look weird, right on our own t-shirts. Who cares? Yeah. But the, but, plan, you know, and the, the, the exactly, kid. <laughs> exactly. And then the plan is to try to find restaurants because we don't want to give them school lunch. I'm sorry. School lunch is not tasty at all. <laughs> you know, it's just what it is. And so we're, we're going around asking with restaurants to sponsor breakfast and lunch. And then we need water, water, water. We don't need juice. Oh, we yeah. don't even need Gatorade. 100%. We just need water. And um, the actually the Bridgeport Fire Department, um, I'm going around collecting water from them. People are individually buying cases from like BJ's and literally like giving them to my uncle who's helping me out with this. Um, awesome. and just literally going, picking them up or they're going to drop it off at my house, one or the other. And again, just getting the community involved to support yeah. the kids. Because once you have one person that supports you, yeah, you're you're going to be successful. All you need is that one person. Now imagine if you have hundreds of people that are supporting you. Yeah, that's incredible, incredible you can be. Yeah, yeah. And um, do you have a link as well as to where people can sign up for that camp, or are they? Is it already full? So it's not full, and yeah. I'm actually yeah. going to schools individually because it's fifty okay. boys and fifty girls. Yeah. So and and it's and I and I keep telling people yes. If you have kids that are playing AAU, if you have kids that are in camps already, guess what? This is not for them. These are for kids that can't afford that. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. Right? So if you can afford to put your kid in AAU, please do not put your kid in this camp because you're taking it away from somebody like me that was never in a basketball camp because my father literally counted his change to give me money to yes. get French fries at Captain's Cove for a trip. Cause he just didn't have it. Yeah. He had it later on. That's, in life. That's a very important distinction too. Yeah. It's, you know, this is all these programs are meant to benefit those who, who need it, who need it. Exactly. Who do not yeah. have as much as you yeah. like, this is what it means to be a community. You know, this Absolutely. is what it means to be human and make those human connections and care. Um, and you might be one of those people as well who might be struggling right now and maybe monetarily cannot do anything, but you can share this information with others. You can help us spread the word. Um, if you can't go, like we said before, maybe there's a way that you can monetarily, you know, help the school by sending in a check or something, you know, what, whatever it is, in whatever way that you can personally assist in spreading the word about all these wonderful programs and events. Um, I, we would just ask everyone to, to just literally share and, and just spread the word. Cause that that's literally what it takes. Let's just create a nice little buzz about it because yeah. if there's a lot of power in, in community and, and what we can achieve together. Uh, during, it's, it's interesting during COVID, there was a, uh, a online thing for nurses as it was called, yeah. it was for nurses and it was called just a buck. Mm -hmm. And in that, in that group, we had millions of nurses that were, you know, going through COVID, having a hard time. And the whole premise was to help support nurses. So everyone would donate a buck, just one, $1. Mm -hmm. Women, nurses, men were getting 60 and $70,000 in one week because everyone was just donating a dollar. So if you have like a million nurses in that group and everybody donates a dollar a week, I mean, yes, you can get I someone getting me. 60, yeah, $70,000. There were nurses that were paying off their school loans. There were nurses that were paying off their car. There were nurses that were literally feeding people in Philippines mm -hmm. with the money. They, every time we would send them more money, they, and it, get, it made me give somebody $50 yeah. because I don't care about the money. You're literally taking the money I'm giving you and giving it to someone else. Like, oh my God, I'm not going to give you a dollar. I'm going to give you $50. Yeah. So you can give them 25 and you can keep 25 for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there were, you know, photographic proof of what she was doing in the moment it was happening, which was amazing. That's so true. just a dollar can go a long way. Exactly. He, in, some, in a situation like this, you know exactly where your money's going and what it's going to be used for. And I just love that. I love that it's, it's a very personal thing. You know, it's Absolutely. not lost in the shuffle of anything. It's just very clean and simple. We need this. We need to support these kids. And Absolutely. like, here's how to do it. Absolutely. Love it. Yeah. I love it, Julia. You guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you. We're, we're, we're a family that cares. We're a family that argues and we get on each other's nerves. Absolutely. <laughs> everybody and everybody argues. And we come together and we help each other and we help others. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Yeah. I love that. I love that mentality. I love that attitude. That's what literally it's all about. That's why we started in a Fairfield Minute because we felt like there was so much that we could give back and so much good and uplifting things that we can do for each other. Um, even in times, I mean, this, we started during COVID, you know, at the end of 2020, we started brainstorming this idea ultimately just to give back, just to give, you know, put something positive out in the world while there was so much turmoil and, you know, coming out of COVID, you know, turmoil doesn't just like disappear because the pandemic disappeared. It's with us always in some level, way, shape or form. Um, so we love to be able to, you know, assist in, in the awareness of things like this because they matter, you know, they really do matter. And this is like, you know, you put good out in the world, however you can in the littlest way it could be like we were talking about before donating things, but it could be in, in the form of a prayer and I don't care, like whatever Absolutely. means to you, whatever giving back means to you, whatever you feel you can do is, is what you should do. And um, it will never go unnoticed that, that, you know, good karma will come back to you. I feel like the universe yeah. brings yeah. it back and pays you back mm -hmm. in whatever way you need it. Right. Um, and, and that's why I just love, love what you're doing. I love it. I think. And, and we love what you're doing too. I fell in <laughs> love with you. you guys and all I do is step, talk about you guys. So thank you. Yeah. We're enjoying it a lot. It's yeah. been two years now. I can't believe it. Two years. So yeah. Like say, when you take, take care of others, you're really taking care of yourself. Of so. yourself. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's it's so it, funny. You said that like, uh, Chris the other day was telling me how like, you know, he was having a bad day and he just had to remove himself from a situation. And in order to get himself out of that, you know, really frustrated, angry moment, he literally just went out and started like, like purposefully being like nice to people. Not that he's not nice to people, but like, like just holding a door open for someone like, I, you know, buying the coffee for the person behind him, exactly. whatever, like anything, uh, letting a person cross the street. Not that you wouldn't do that anyway, but like smiling and waving, yeah. you know, like gestures of gratitude and, and, right. and, you know, things that are like positive affirmations, like the, they go a long way and they really mm -hmm. change your spirit. You know, I feel That's right. the more That's that so we can true. all do that together, the Absolutely. better. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. I know you guys, thanks for taking the time. You know, I, I really appreciate it. I know everyone's busy and you have so yeah, much. I mean, on. I have to go beat up some six, second graders. You, you know, ready? priorities, priorities. <laughs> Taking them down. And then I'm coming for the wizards after that. Once I'm oh, done with easy. the wizards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once, once I'm not really, once I'm done with the wizards, then I'm going to put an IV in them because they're going to need some hydration. So. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody, you guys Thank it's you. gonna be a great event i'm so happy Thank i'm so you. proud of you guys Thank um you. and i'll get all the information from you and i'll put it you know along with this post to make sure everyone mm -hmm. knows exactly where to go what to do um and we'll tag anyone we need to tag um that is you know joining you that day we'd love to help um get them some attention as well awesome. um, thank you so really appreciate your time um thanks again for everything you're doing we're going to help you spread the word and um yeah thank you yes, thank you great great Bless to meet you. all of you